Welcome to the next level. Hey everyone, this is Abit Flashback, and today we're going to be checking out the Super Kuma 9000 case made by Kentaro, and this is a pretty impressive little case. This case is inspired by the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, and it's designed for the Raspberry Pi 3, the Pi 2, the B+, and the Asus Tinkerboard. And for an operating system, you can use a RetroPie image or a recall box image, but for this video, I'll be demonstrating on a RetroPie image. So this is Kentaro's newest model, and it's got quite a few upgrades. And if you're looking to get one of these, I'll make sure to post a link down below. They're going to be for sale at Amazon for the price of $19.91, which celebrates the launch date of the original Super Nintendo, which was September 9th, 1991. And these aren't quite available or in stock yet, but they will be here soon. We're looking at it March 2nd, so it's just around the corner. So probably the biggest upgrade with this case is it has functional soft power and reset buttons. And what that means is when you turn off the power, it doesn't just kill the power to the Raspberry Pi 3, which could cause damage to that RetroPie image. Instead, what it does is it starts a shutdown script and safely shuts down the RetroPie image and then shuts off the console. And that's the proper way to do it, otherwise you could possibly corrupt that image. The quality of the case is very nice and it has a lot of detail. On the side, we got access to the SD card. Then on the back, we got the HDMI output, the power input, and the AV out. Then on the opposite side, we got access to our USB ports and the Ethernet port. Then on the bottom of the case, we got some upgrades too. We got better vent positioning for cooling, including that fan mount. Then we got some extra detail to the case like this. Here's access to the extension port that had been on the original Super Nintendo back in 1991. Now this is fake, it doesn't open or nothing, but it's really cool to see this extra detail in the case. It makes it look a lot nicer. Also in the box, we got a quick guide that'll tell you how to set this up and how to program those power and reset buttons to make them function properly. Then we have a heat sink, and this will help keep that Raspberry Pi 3 cool and running smoothly. We got three bags of screws to assemble everything. Then we have some heat paste, and we'll use that for that heat sink to make it function even better. And we also have a small Phillips screwdriver, and that's the only tool we need to assemble the case. And I'd also like to mention that it comes very well packed. Inside the box is a foam insert, so everything stays nice and neat inside the box. And here's a comparison side by side with the official Super Nintendo Classic Edition. And as you can see, those colors are very close to each other. They did a very good job with making those colors true. And there's a lot of other details that make it look very close to the official, like the controller ports on the front. Those ports aren't functional on the Kuma case, but the detail does look nice. The biggest difference as far as the looks of the case is the Kuma case is slightly smaller. So I'd call this the little brother. Okay, it's time to assemble the case, and we'll take the two halves apart, and we'll take a closer look. So the bottom of the case now has that optional fan mount with four screw holes, so you can keep it nice and secure. Uh, this isn't required, but if you want to help keep it even cooler, you can. And here's a look at the top of the case, and here's a look at the PCB board. And on this side is where it plugs into the Raspberry Pi 3. Then on the opposite side, we have that hookup for a fan if you choose to hook one up. Then in the bottom right corner, there's a red LED light that's also attached to the board. And this PC board is by far my favorite new feature with the case. Being able to have those functional on and off power buttons with a soft shutdown is a huge plus. So to build my console, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3, a USB controller. You can also use wireless controllers like a Wii U Pro controller, but I recommend you at least have one USB controller. I'll also be using a USB keyboard and a 5 volt micro USB power supply, at least 2 amps. And you're also going to need a micro SD card with an operating system. I'll be using RetroPi 4.3. So I'm going to start with placing the Raspberry Pi 3 inside the case. And it only goes in one direction. Your HDMI port and USB port should all line up correctly. So it comes with three bags of screws, four smaller ones to attach the case together, two smaller ones if you're not going to be using the heatsink, and two larger ones if you are using the heatsink. So now it's time to put the heatsink on. And this heatsink is optional, you don't have to use it, but it does work really well, and I recommend using it. So before we install the heat sink, we're going to apply a couple drops of the heat paste and that's going to allow that heat sink to work that much better and have better contact with the board, which will keep it nice and cool. And you don't want to get carried away with that heat paste. You just want to put a small amount on both of these chips just so it makes contact with the heat sink. Now it's time to put the heat sink in place and we're going to secure it with the two screw holes located right here. And the screws we're going to be using are the two larger screws that are a little bit longer. The other two screws that are larger but shorter, you only want to use those if you're not using a heat sink. So we're only going to use two screws to secure it. Now it's time to attach the top of the case, and it's going to plug in right here to the Raspberry Pi 3 board. So that plug-in is going to line up right here with these pins. So it's going to line up with the pins all the way to the right. And the connection plugs in very easy. All you got to do is make sure the two halves of the case are square with each other, and then just press straight down. 
and you want to take your time with this step be gentle you don't want to bend those pins so just make sure that case is nice and square and it should just press right together and they designed it like this to save some room in the case and it worked out well all right now it's time to secure those two halves together with the four small screws located right here and that's the last step for building the case now we're going to be on to the software so now I have my RetroPie 4.3 already pre-installed on this micro SD card. I'm going to go ahead and insert that into the console. Then I'm going to go hook it up to the TV with the power switch in the on position. So the power, the reset button, and the LED light are not going to work until we install the PCB driver. So once you get RetroPie up and running, you're going to have to log into Wi-Fi. So go to your config menu, and then scroll down to Wi-Fi. So to log into the Wi-Fi is very easy. You just search for your router, enter your password if you have one, then you're connected. And you're also going to need a USB keyboard for this step so you can enter the password. Once you get connected to Wi-Fi, you're going to exit out of that menu. Then you're going to scroll up to Raspi Config. And I should mention I'm using a SNES Classic theme made by Ruckage. So your layout might look a little bit different, but you should still have all the same items. Once we're inside this menu, we're going to scroll down to Interface and Options and press Enter. Now we're going to scroll down to SSH and Enter. Then we're going to enable SSH. And what this is going to do is allow our computer to communicate with RetroPie with a program called PuTTY. So basically with this PuTTY program, you can remote control RetroPie with your PC. And I'll make sure to provide a link for PuTTY down below. So after enabling SSH, go ahead and exit out and back to your main menu of RetroPie. Now I'm gonna move over to my PC. And this is the command we're gonna enter in PuTTY. And this command is gonna download the necessary software to make our power and reset button and LED all function correctly. So I'm just gonna copy this command and I'll make sure to post it down in the description too. Now I'm going to open up PuTTY on my computer. This is a free program and it's really easy to use. Once open, I'm going to type in RetroPie for the host name. Then we want to make sure SSH is enabled because that's how we're going to link to RetroPie. The first time you use PuTTY, you might get a security warning. You'll just click OK or Yes to continue. So we're going to log in as Pi and then the password is going to be Raspberry. And you're not going to be able to see it as you type it just to make sure you spell it correctly. After entering the password, press enter. Then that's gonna open up the RetroPie terminal where we can enter a command to download the software. And to paste that command I copied earlier, all you have to do is right click once the terminal's open. So my command's there, ready to go. Now I'm just gonna press enter and that's gonna start installing the software. So it usually takes about five minutes to install everything. So I'm gonna fast forward it so you don't have to sit through it all. And once it's done installing, we're gonna type in sudo reboot. But before we do this, make sure your console is in the on position. Once the console reboots, your power, reset, and LED should all function correctly. So once that console boots up, that LED should pop on. Then we're going to be welcomed by a new splash screen, the Kentaro. Now we're gonna wait for that RetroPie menu to pop up and we're gonna test out the power and reset buttons, make sure they're functioning correctly. And if everything goes right, when I push reset, it should start that shutdown script. So now it's safely shutting down that RetroPie image. Once it's done doing that, it's gonna reboot the console because we selected reset. And it looks like everything's working correctly with the reset switch. Now we're gonna let it boot all the way back up and test that power switch. And when I shut that off, it should initiate that shutdown script, then turn the console completely off and stay off. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. Everything's working just like it should. So overall, I think this is a great little case. It looks great, it functions great, it works as intended. Those functional soft power and reset buttons is a great feature. And there's a lot of other details that make this case great. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you wanna hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you wanna help support or sponsor the channel, you can now find me on Patreon. I'll be talking about upcoming projects, giveaways, and much more. All right, everyone. See you next time.